Come here, please. <laughs> you want a treat? You want this? Kitty! There's no treat! <laughs> Come here. dog I've ever seen. Come here. Whee! <laughs> you gonna sit like this? Show everybody your belly. Your little cow belly. Hey friends, it is Jenna and Penny. What is up? And welcome back to the board game garden. You guys can tell by the title that today we are doing another like top videos, but today we are going to be doing my top 20 most anticipated board games of 2023 and there is a lot but they are kind of separated into a few different categories. The first one is going to be games that I have already kickstarted that are going to be fulfilled in 2023 that I'm excited about. Um, another category is going to be quickly just games that I mentioned in another video which I will link that video up here. I did it probably five or six months ago, maybe five months ago. Um, I listed off a bunch of games that I'm excited about. Some of them have already come to retail, some of them have already been kickstarted, um, and some of them have still yet to be kickstarted. So I'm just gonna quickly list off a few of those that I'm still excited about. Um, and then we're also going to get into ones that I don't really know whether they're coming to Kickstarter in 2023 or they're just going straight to retail in 2023, but all of them do have a um, 2023 release date on Board Game Geek. So who knows how they're coming to um, be, but whatever that is, I'm excited about them. And then lastly, I'm going to touch on a few expansions that I'm excited about for 2023. So yes, without further ado, let's get into this video. If you guys want to see, then just keep on watching. Give this video a big thumbs up if you are excited about these games. Comment down below which one you are excited about. If there's any that I have missed, hit that subscribe button if you have yet to do so. We would love to have you here in the garden. And without further ado, let's get into this most anticipated games of 2023 video. Y'all, let's do it. I always say, shall we? But I didn't do it this time. But uh, let's get into this video, shall we? <laughs> Okay, so the first category that we're gonna go into is just the games that I have backed on Kickstarter. I am not like a big Kickstarter person. Um, I will back a game. I have I will preface this by saying I've only backed two games, but I will only back a game if I am super, super excited about it. If there's some sort of like extra thing that comes along with it or something like that. But typically I can wait until it comes to retail. I fully understand the reasoning behind um, companies putting things on Kickstarter and people back in Kickstarter um, to support and stuff like that, but I personally don't do it a lot, but I do love looking at what's coming to Kickstarter and stuff. Um, but the two games that I have backed on Kickstarter that um, are going to be getting fulfilled in 2023 are one, Bark Avenue. I am so excited about Bark Avenue. Um, they have done a fantastic job with keeping everyone up to date. Um, it is published by um, Terra Dice Games um, and I'm so, so excited for this game. One, because it is a fantastic game. I did get an opportunity to play the prototype. I actually do still have the prototype here so I could play that again, but they have been making some small improvements to it and I'm so excited to see the final version of this. Also, the other reason I'm so excited about it is the little one that is on my lap right now is actually included in the game. Can you believe it? I will put her card um, on either side. I don't know what side, probably this side. Um, but yes, she's going to be in the game and they are having this go to retail. So I'm so excited. It's just crazy to me that like people that purchase this game are going to have a card of my little baby. And Penny's going to be like remembered in board game forever. And that just like huh, means so much to me and I'm going to cry, but I'm gonna hold it back because this little thing is the love of my life. Hi, do you know how much I love you? I don't think you do. All you care about is snacks and that's it. 
<laughs> but anyways, yes. Um, Varg Avenue from Paradise Games is the one that I am very, very excited about. First one that I'm excited about. Um, Jonathan McKenzie did a fantastic job with it. So that is the first game. And then the second one that I have backed that I am sure some of you might think, I wonder if Jenna has backed this, and I have. Um, that is Legacy of You. This is by Garfield Games. It is, I think, next in like the... The trilogy of games, um, there's Raiders of Scythia, there's Hadrian's Wall, and then there's Legacy of You now. I think that's like in a like a series of games that Garfield Games does that's not, like they're not all tied together as far as I know, but they're just not in the like trilogies, trilogies that they typically do. So um, yes, Legacy of You is a solo only campaign game. And just looking at it, it reminded me a lot of Hadrian's Wall, kind of just like a version of Hadrian's Wall that's not a roll and write. Um, I'm sure the gameplay is like nowhere near <laughs> Hadrian's Wall, but just the fact that it's by um, Shem, which I will add that Hadrian's Wall is not by Shem Phillips, it's by Bobby Hill, but just having it in that um, same publisher, I know it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And Francis and I have really, really been enjoying Wayfarers of the South Tigris. So I have a lot of faith that this is going to be a fantastic game and just really cool to have something that's just like a solo only campaign that I can go through myself. Very excited. So that is Legacy of You. I'm very excited about that one. And those are the only two so far that I have backed myself on Kickstarter. I will say that the next one that we're going to talk about um, I don't know if the late pledges are still open, but I'm very tempted to late pledge this next one. But anyways, let's get into the games that I mentioned in the other video. I'm just going to quickly go through a few of them that I'm still very, very excited about. Um, so let's get into that. So for the video that I made before, a few that I mentioned, first being Septima or Septima. This is coming to you by Mind Clash Games, and I have talked about this game a lot it's all about making your own witch coven and trying to become the next high witch, um, the next Septima or Septima. Still don't know how it's <laughs> said. I think it's Septima. I'm pretty sure it's Septima. It might be Septima. Um, but I am very excited about this game. The look of it, the gameplay of like brewing potions and having... Um, what are they called? Witch trials. That's what they're called. Having different trials and different things like that. I think it looks very cool. And like the whole like being able to take the same action as someone else and having it become more powerful if you do it together. I just think it sounds fantastic. So that is one that I've already chatted about. Another one that I chatted about was Flow. This is from Pika Games and the art is by Andrew Bosley and the designer is Henry Audubon. Henry did Parks, which I absolutely love. Um, and then Andrew Bosley is just an absolutely fantastic artist. And I just love his art in all of the things that he has done, um, like Everdell, I think that's the main one that I know of, and Merchants of the Dark Road. Um, but yeah, Flow is, I don't know a ton about it. When I first looked into it, they didn't have a lot of um, information on it, but here it says, Flow will take you on a heroic journey across the Iceberg Sea. Choose your path and leave your mark on the realm. What type of hero will you be? Will you explore the ever-changing iceberg islands and discover long-lost secrets? Sail the windy waves in search of sunken treasure and daring adventure? Fight fearsome monsters on your journey into the frozen heart of the ice? Or kick back and enjoy some kelp noodle soup. Are you freaking kidding me? That is the cutest thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, but yes, it's safe to say that I am very, very excited about this game. Um, Pika Games is actually a sister company to Fantasia Games. They made things like Endless Winter, um, as well as, I don't know if I have it there anymore. Oh, it's on this side. Um, I do have a prototype of Unconscious Mind, which is another one that I am looking forward to. Um, I believe the Kickstarter is set to fulfill in 2023, um, and I'm just excited to try the prototype. We're hoping to get it to the table very, very soon. Um, but yeah, Fantasia Games has made some awesome games so far, and this one is not looking any different from their sister company, Pika Games. So yes, that is Flow. Sounds amazing. And then I believe last, not lastly, 
Um, next one is the Search for Lost Species. So this is the next in the Search for series that Renegade Game Studios has coming out. There's the first one, which is the Search for Planet X. I absolutely love that game and that actually reminds me that I really want to play that solo within the near future. Um, it is a fantastic deduction game and this one looks like it's in the same kind of um, series obviously and probably plays pretty similarly but instead of finding Planet X you are finding Lost Species and it looks absolutely amazing. There are no pictures as of yet of what it looks like but I am pretty sure, it only has like the picture of the front cover, but I'm pretty sure that they do have it on pre-order currently on the Renegade Game Studios website, so maybe I will grab that. That is that one. And then lastly, for games that I've already mentioned in the past before, Maple Valley by Kids Table Board Games is one that I am so excited about. I absolutely loved Creature Comforts, and this one is in the same universe, but um, by the looks of it, plays completely different, has different mechanisms. Um, it says here mechanisms are hand management and set collection. So I think it's a lot more moving around a board. Um, you have cards and obviously hand management, doing things with those cards. And it is a one to five player game. So I think that's the same as um, Creature Comforts. And Roberta Taylor did a fantastic job with Creature Comforts. So I'm sure this one is going to be great as well. But yes, those are all the games that I have already mentioned in the past. Next up, we're gonna get into just a bunch of games that I have found on Board Game Geek that don't really know if they are coming to Kickstarter. They might have already come to Kickstarter. I'll let you guys know kind of what I know about it, but the either they've already been on Kickstarter, they're coming to Kickstarter, they're coming to retail, not really sure, but let's get into that. First up is a game that a lot of people have been chatting about, and this is the fourth in the series of Flat Out Games games. Um, you have Calico, Cascadia, Verdant, and now Fit to Print. And this one looks like it plays very different from the rest of them. They are all just generally puzzly games, and this one is actually a real-time puzzle game that reminds me a lot of Galaxy Trucker, which I love Galaxy Trucker so much. It's a game that we've had in our collection for a while, and it is just absolutely amazing. I love it. I love the real-time aspect of grabbing tiles from the middle of the board and trying to find a place to like put it in your little like ship. This one is very similar where you are grabbing tiles from the middle and trying to create some sort of newspaper layout. And I believe you can't, well maybe you can. I watched the Brothers Murph play this on live stream a few times and I'm pretty sure you can like move things around on your board. At first I thought that you could only just like take the tiles but not lay them out and you kind of had to guess if things would fit, but I'm pretty sure you're able to pick from the, the middle section, kind of see where everything can fit perfectly, but you only have a certain amount of time and things have to be beside um, certain things. And if something is beside one thing, you can get negative points, things like that. Um, it just looks absolutely amazing. I love the vibe of like the old timey animals in the newspaper print shop. It just looks absolutely adorable. And if it's anything like all of the other games, which granted I haven't tried Verdant yet, um, but if it's like Calico and Cascadia, I know I'm going to love it because those are some of my favorite just casual puzzly games. So that is Fit to Print. Next game is one that automatically had me just at the little saying on the front. This is a game called Fika. I believe that's how it is pronounced. Um, the cover that I'm looking at right now is the Swedish one. I'm trying to find what it says. Yes, Fika, the clever coffee break. I am obsessed. So this is a game coming from, I believe, 25th Century Games, which is fun. Um, I love a lot of their games. And basically in Fika, it is a um, pattern building, set collection, simultaneous action selection game. You have cards and it says here in Fika, you are a street cafe owner trying to out earn your competitor by skillfully arranging your cards, um, arranging the cards in your own cafe and manipulating those of your opponent so that you can be the first to win two rounds. This sounds so much fun. Honestly, I 
love small games like this and just the the vibe of this game with the coffee break you guys know how much I love coffee games I am trying to collect most coffee games I'm, I'm getting there but um, Fika is one that I feel like I just need because I just love the look of it and I know that I'm going to love this just like simple kind of card game that it has here it says it plays in 20 minutes which is awesome um, it is a 2.5 on complexity, so I'm not sure. That sounds pretty difficult for a small little card game, but we will see how it goes. It is just a two-player game, head-to-head, -head, so that is fun. I'm always looking for ones that Francis and I can play together, so this one looks good. Art by Bess Sobel, you know it's going to be good. So that is Fika. I think I'm saying that right. Fika? Fika? Who knows? Moving on to the next game. This one is called Flower or Flower. It's spelled flower, but it, instead of E-R, it's A-R. Um, this looks like such a gorgeous game. That's the one thing that really caught me is just how beautiful this game looks. Um, the board in this game looks very interesting where um, there's like a circle in the middle and then there are a bunch of different boards around the outside that are shaped as petals. So the entire board all together looks like this big flower. Um, it is one to four players, so I love seeing that a game can be played solo. And the mechanisms are hand management, set collection, variable phase order, which sounds pretty cool, worker placement, and worker placement with different worker types. So I don't know if that is dice. I don't think it is. It might be something different, but it looks amazing. Um, wow. I'm looking at pictures right now and I'm just like obsessed. The look of it is really what brought me in, but um, with all of the different mechanisms that I just listed, I feel like it's something that I would really enjoy. What it says here is, for four weeks, graceful rain attracts thousands of workers willing to collect and transport the most beautiful flowers of the kingdom for flower, flower, flower an annual festival that commemorates the anniversary of the end of the 200 years war. So yes, that is Flower or Flower. Um, I don't know if this one's coming to crowdfunding or if it's just going to retail or if it maybe has already been released, but just not to North America yet. Um, but it's one that I would love, love to try in 2023. So that is Flower. And then next up, we have one that I kid you not, I was like this close to backing on Kickstarter because it looks so cool. And unlike any other um, game that I've seen, this is Tesseract. Um, basically, there is a cube that is made up of a bunch of dice and you are trying to manipulate the dice in order to take dice off of that cube and place different die onto your board. I believe it is a cooperative game and you're trying to get like different sets of certain things in order to take some things and then place them on your board. And then you have to have like one of every dice face and dice color on your board. And I think if you get them all, you win. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but it looks very cool. It is published by Smirk and Laughter Games, and just the look of this game is so cool. And I have discovered that I really love dice manipulation, anything to do with moving dice, using dice as workers, um, like woodcraft, you have the dice that you can like saw in half to like do different things with. It's very, very cool. And it's something that I really enjoy in games. So. Tesseract does something very cool with the dice and it really um, caught my eye. So that is another one. Moving on to one that I think is just the funniest thing. And honestly, the moment I saw this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need this. Um, this game is called Charcuterie the Board Game. And you guys probably know, don't know this, but um, I love a good charcuterie board. I love making charcuterie boards and having charcuterie nights with wine and cheese and crackers and meats and it's just, it's fabulous. So when I saw this, uh, I was like automatically in love and I don't know if this is coming to retail, if it's going to Kickstarter, who knows? It is from three, 
WS Games, which I've never heard of before, but it, I'll show you guys the pictures that it has on here. It's looking real cool. It's looking like there's some like different tiles of like different meats and cheeses. Okay, so my camera stopped filming. I don't know what it got and what it didn't, but I am very excited about this charcuterie the board game. I have no idea how it plays, but all the different tiles and the, the cheeses and the meats and the crackers and stuff, it just, it looks cool. So that is charcuterie the board game. Next up we have, ooh, I'm excited about this one. This is from Dark Doll Games, and this is a game called Witchbound, which much like Septima or Septima, this like witch, witchy vibe type theme really, really gets my attention. And this is actually a um, one player only game, I believe, and it is a story driven game about being in a coven, I believe. I believe it's more of like a story driven campaign game, a little bit of like a, like a point and click kind of vibe to it where you are just going through and um, following this story and it looks absolutely amazing. Um, there's dice rolling, narrative choice, paragraph, pattern recognition, push your luck, and solo solitaire games. So just the look of this game got me right off the bat. I saw it over on Twitter and I just like, I just fell in love. So that is Witchbound. Um, again, another solo only game. I really want to maybe dive into a few solo only kind of things, more like campaign style games that I can continue going back to just myself. Um, and this is one that I would love to do that with. Um, but yeah, that is Witchbound. Next up is one that I kind of just randomly found when I was doing some research, and this is from Buffalo Games. I'm pretty sure this is the same publisher that has done Summer Camp as well as Planted, and this is called Starry Night Sky. Um, it says, discover the stars in constellations as you move your telescope across the night sky. This sounds like something I would love. Um, I just recently got Astra, which we've been really enjoying. Um, there's another one, I forget what it's called, but I will put a picture of that game right here. Um, but this one is kind of along the same lines as those with constellations and the night sky and just anything with that theme just gets me right away. It is only two to four players, so it doesn't have like a solo. Um, but most games these days, I feel like a lot of people our um, publishers eventually come out with a solo variant or a fan makes a solo variant, so maybe one will come out. Um, but it says here, in this game of celestial discovery, you'll discover the wonders of the night sky with your trusty telescope. Each turn, cast your gaze across the heavens to locate new stars and map them onto constellations. Earn points for the stars you place, score bonus points, for completing exploration goals and finishing the constellations in your end game myths. That sounds very cool. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Astra, but we will see. Um, it's just one that I kind of found randomly um, while I was researching. Next up is a game that I am considering backing on Kickstarter just because I love the look of this game so much and just the, the concept of this game. Um, I think is one that I just, uh, I can't, I can't not have it. Um, this is Wild Gardens. This is by Rose Gauntlet Entertainment. And basically in this game, you are foraging, making friends, and cooking food. Are you kidding me? Uh, it looks adorable. The art looks absolutely gorgeous. And it, it doesn't even have any, like, mechanisms, but I'm pretty sure, um, I don't even know. Recipe cards, feeding guests, um, complete recipes, participating in community objectives. Each round players reveal a new location card and move their forger around the path board to gain access to different forging zones and ingredients. They can use different actions to interact with those spaces in unique ways. Forging um, an ingredient shows players or allows players to gain ingredient tokens that can be used to complete recipes and other objectives. Oh, wow. That sounds amazing. Um, yes, there's a possibility that I might actually back this one on Kickstarter. It looks absolutely beautiful. I believe I heard that it is coming to Kickstarter late January or 
February maybe? Um, but yeah, very, very excited about Wild Gardens. Moving into the next one, this is the next in the South Tigris series. Like I mentioned earlier, Francis and I have been obsessed with Wayfarers of the South Tigris. And the next in the series is Scholars of the South Tigris. And this game looks very fun. I don't know a ton about how the game plays, but they did share a picture of the board. Um, there's a bunch of different colored tracks and you have a little board in front of you and you're playing different cards or like tucking cards underneath. And I believe the whole um, mechanism theme with the South Tigris um, trilogy is dice worker placement and like dice manipulation. Um, I guess you don't really do, there's a little bit of dice manipulation in Wayfarers, but it's mainly just worker placement dice with a little bit of um, mitigation. Mitigation? Manipulation? Who knows? Anyways, very excited for this one. And then lastly, for another smaller game, I really enjoy Point Salad. And next in that little series from AEG and Flat Out Games is Point City. I've heard a lot of good things about this one. Um, it looks a little bit similar, but has some different things to it. Um, you are picking up these um, resource cards that are a bunch of different colors. Looks a little bit similar to the vegetables in Point Salad but they are a bunch of resources that then you're using to build these buildings and getting points in different ways. It looks so good. I think I mentioned in the past that I thought it was a tile laying game, but it's not. It's it's uh, cards like point salad, but looks like it plays a little bit differently and is maybe slightly a little bit heavier than point salad. So, okay, so those are all of the games, but now I do wanna move on to just a few expansions that I I'm very excited about it. So first off, there is the Arc Nova expansion. This is the Aquarius expansion, and I'm sure most of you know about this, but there is a like water creature expansion that is coming for Arc Nova. I'm not 100% sure what it brings to the game. I just know that I enjoy Arc Nova, so I'm sure that any sort of expansion for it, I'm going to enjoy as well. And then there's also another expansion that there is not a name for it yet. It is just going to be released in 2023 for a game that Francis and I absolutely love. And that is the Lost Ruins of Arnak second expansion. So there is the Expedition Leaders expansion, which we have and we really enjoy. That one adds variable player powers, which is awesome. And then it also added some more cards, some more items, artifacts, as well as a, another double-sided board for the research track. And this one, I believe, is adding cooperative aspects to the game of Lost Ruins of Arnak, which is interesting. I am not the hugest fan of cooperative games, but we will see. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I heard that somewhere, but um, basically the only thing that people have seen is, I think at, it might have been Gen Con, there was a box of Lost Ruins of Arnak an expansion and just had like question marks on it. So I will include that picture somewhere um, as I'm talking about this, but there has been not much other information aside from that. So yes, that was the second expansion that I'm excited about. And then the third one is one that did already go to Kickstarter and I really wish I backed this one. I might actually still have the opportunity to late back it. Um, but I might also just wait until it comes to retail. But that is the Fall Flavors expansion for Honey Buzz. I love Honey Buzz. I love it solo. I also love it multiplayer. And this one adds some like fruit and stuff that you're collecting, I believe. Um, I think there might be like a few different modules. Correct me if I'm wrong. I do think I saw that there was like a fruit module and then possibly like a fall leaves module as well and maybe something else but yes i absolutely love honey buzz and just anything additional that i can have in that game specifically to play it solo because i do really love honey buzz solo um i'm really excited about that so yes i think that is going to be everything for today's video 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed just hanging out and chatting about some games that are going to be released in 2023. Some I've already chatted about before, some I just discovered not too long ago. So if you guys did enjoy this video, give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below if any of these games you are also excited about or if there's any that you are excited about that I need to look into, ones that I may have missed. Um, there are a ton of games always getting released every single year, so it's really hard to know about all of them, but these are some that I have found during my searches of BGG and just social media. And yeah, hit that subscribe button if you guys have yet to join the garden, if you would like to. Um, we'd love to have you here. I love you guys so much. Remember, you are somebody's reason to smile, and I will see you guys in the next board game video. Bye, friends. <laughs>